So I'm Sue Williamson. I'm the um, founder and CEO at Tang Hall Smart, which is a community interest company. And we're based at the Burnham Community Hub in uh, Tang Hall in York. And we're a provider of uh, music, electronics, arts activities. And we're using these as a vehicle for recovery for people with mental health difficulties, um, struggling with addiction, um, people with um, offending patterns of behaviour, um, but also for people that have uh, learning disabilities. 2014, um, the site we're on now, formerly it was a school, Burn Home Community College, where I worked as a, a teacher and a special educational needs coordinator. And uh, when the school um, was, uh, well, doomed, I suppose is the right word for closure, um, there was a bit of a fight which I was involved in, um, to keep the school going, even though um, I think it was never going to be a fight we were going to win. And um, as a result of which, when the school did shut and I was offered the choice of redundancy um, or being deployed elsewhere, um, I'd made the decision that I was going to stay here. The school had shut, a primary school had shut, adult education centre had shut and the youth club had shut a few years previously. And it's a fragmented community um, quite a deprived community and um, I wanted to do something here in this place for the children and the families that I'd known so well. I've always had two strands to my life. There's a strand to do with words and a strand to do with, with music and at different times in my life one or other of them has come to the forefront. So I started off as a, um, a clarinet player and a saxophone player. Fast forward and I'm in a band called Resistance where I am the, the lead singer and uh, I guess pushing the boundaries, uh, representing um, the, the female kind of agenda, but particularly older females. Um, believe it or not, I am an older female. <laughs> um, and also in my band, there's um, Al, my husband, but then three people that have had experience of homelessness and um, struggled with addiction and things. And I guess I'd thought to myself, because 30 years is a long time to not be doing anything as a, a musician. I mean, I was, because I was teaching, but I wasn't performing. But I, I'd thought to myself, well, if I'm ever going to be in a band with anyone, then these are the kind of guys I want to stand alongside and um, say, you know, I stand with you. And it's a good thing to do musically, to stand with someone else and to, um, you know, show the world visibly that you, are, you approve, I suppose. And it's been really, really good fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, all, everyone's fighting against something, struggling against something in resistance. Um, there's, um, well, Sinbad, who's um, struggling, fighting against, um, well, background of homelessness and uh, addiction, and also a terminal diagnosis, and it's kind of like saying, well, stuff that, I'm kind of, you know, I'm here, and I'm going to rock out. And then there's two other guys in the band, um, both of whom have had long-term experiences of homelessness and addiction. Um, and the, the, I would say are actually succeeding um, against that struggle. One of whom has just started his masters up at York University, having had like a year or so here. And the other one is my music director. And he'd come from a, a background of um, no kind of proper work for 15 or so years, uh, and an alcoholic since he was 12. And um, he's now absolutely smashing it. So they're my band. And so Al is my um, husband who co-founded um, SMART with me. Al has his own specialisms which are very different to mine, complementary. So whereas mine are music and supporting people, Al's are more like workshop skills, he's very technical, he's also a very confident, sociable person and um, engages well with people. My name is Alex Williamson and uh, me and my wife run a company called Tangle Smart which is mainly music based but we do some technology and artwork as well. The artwork we've only just started but the technology we have been doing for three years. The uh, two main things that we've been working on is the, as we call it, the prox box which is a, um, a way of uh, triggering a MIDI unit using ultrasonic uh, wave patterns. So as you put your hand near it, the note changes, and that is keyable, so you can play it in any key. I mean, that is aimed for the special needs group. I didn't mention that, did I? I'm really aiming that one at people who've got very poor uh, mobility. So you can get a tune by walking near it. 
The other thing that we're very proud of is the um, MIDI flute, which likewise is connected to the computer. And, um, but it has two units, it has one unit, six of the computer, and the actual flute itself. Um, and they are joined together on, uh, with Bluetooth, so there's no wires between them. And we call it a flute, although you can actually play any instrument that you can get on the computer. So basically, it's a MIDI activator, but it, it does it proportionally. So the harder you blow into the mouthpiece, the louder it gets, and the less you blow in, the softer it is to give it proper feel as an instrument, rather than just a plastic whistle. A lot of it, uh, with the guy who did all the software programming for the flute and the prox box, he was in a very bad place when he first came here, but he was a very, very good computer programmer. So I've used those skills for myself, if you like, but also to get him back on the road because it's given him something to aim for. You know, we started with a, a box of nothing and now we've got a working flute, MIDI flute. And it's all down to his programming skills and because he's done that he's now settled and he's gone back to university. So this we made for one of the lads who attends Applefield School who um, has no hands and who's desperate to play guitar. So we've made this thing and uh, we call it the wrist pick and I'm gonna I'll come in close to the camera with it but basically if you can see that the plectrum is mounted in a, in, a, in a plastic shroud and the guy well the guy we use he actually plays blues using a, um, a bottleneck and he plays it like that, you with me? Because he hasn't got the ability to do this. So he plays it this way around, like that. Which he loves. We've had, you know, people who turn up very, very poorly, and then, you know, we look after them, give them something to do, which is the most important thing. You know, something, a project for them to do. We've people in, in, on the music side. Uh, have you met Neil yet? Have you interviewed Neil at all? No, no, not yet. Well, he's, he's another one. He's had his, he's had his moments quite bad ones, <laughs> but he's an absolutely fantastic musician. He's very, very creative. In my opinion, the best in York, without a shadow of a doubt, you know. But he's had lots and lots and lots of problems for it, and he's been dry for the longest time ever since he's come here. The animation stuff, that, that, um, that came about with, um, I did, we, we don't do this, in fact, we don't do it at all really now. We had a kids club um, for little boys, basically. It's a few girls as well, but they were 11, 12, that sort of 10, 11, 12. And um, it was just something for them to play with, basically. But I got quite into it. <laughs> so we've made quite a few little films. And what's nice about it is that you can put it across the different classes that we have. They all want to have a little go with it. We've started doing a bit of an arts project. Now, the, art, the, the arts thing has come quite recently, and I'm not a brilliant artist, but so I've been getting sort of projects together for that. Um, the, the wood has just come from the bird box because we make bird boxes, don't we, Nicholas? Yeah, bird boxes, yeah. That's my man. That's over there, yeah. yeah, so we're going to bosh them out to sell. Not for much, but they get to learn a lot of skills, don't you, Nicholas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've done a little night light, you know, for kids' night, uh, night light. Uh, we've done, uh, it's a long list. Uh, we've done an MP3 player, we've done loudspeakers, we've done the record player, we've done a complete stereo system, including the speakers, I have to say. That worked. Do you remember the speakers? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, those massive speakers. Do you remember oh. making them? So this is, um, this was for Daniel. Now Daniel, Daniel was very, 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 wouldn't, wouldn't say a word, you know. And then one day, I found, well, a couple of weeks ago, I found that Daniel loves train sets. So, we sat down and made this train out of plumbing pipe and again the 3D printer, because we made all these in 3D printer, the wheels and that. So, uh, we're going to sort of have a little station set up, you know? So we've got the, uh, the engine, tunnels, trees. But this was just to get Daniel going, because he was sitting there silently like this, you know what I mean? But then one day he started talking about diesel engines. I thought, because yeah, you you've got a foot in then, you see, you've got a foot in the door, haven't you? When you find out what they like doing, that's the secret. It's no good trying to make them do something they don't want to do. It's just an absolute waste of time. Well, that's what, you know, that's what I like to think is about. You know, it's about sharing skills, isn't it? And we are talking earlier on about ideas. Sharing ideas, you know, like you were saying earlier on, is massively important, this. Because I am, because don't forget, we've got, the, we've got the music and stuff to do as well. You're with me? It's not, 
this, this, this side of it's all small really, the money side is the music at the moment, but I really want to keep that to us going. But what I do need is a guy, um, who I, I needed was a guy to do uh, a lot of hand uh, skill stuff. And uh, this morning, we've, we've taken someone on this morning who's going to do four hours a week with us to help me produce some of this stuff. That's the thing, you know, that's what I'm afraid we're missing a little bit off. It sounds like a right old moan, doesn't it? But well, I've seen it. It's, yeah. it's a lot of it's gone, you know. It's, why do you think the B&Q, when you go and B&Q, everyone's over 60 men? <laughs> Uh, I'm Sinbad and I play Djembe and I'm homeless and I come here once a week and make music and which is a group set up to help people primarily who are homeless but also every other part of society as well like kids with learning difficulties, kids who are naughty at school and things like that you know what I mean and Give them therapy through music. Well, I've been coming here about 20 weeks. And in that time, I've gone from just being able to play the djembe to getting fairly proficient at the, at the piano, which I always wanted to learn, but never had the chance because, you know, piano lessons weren't cheap and stuff like that, you know. You know the girl who teaches me, Jo, who works here, she's also doing a PhD in music at York St. John Uni and this is part of her PhD you know so the work we're doing together forms part of her PhD as well so I'm helping someone else out at the same time like you know what I mean which I like the idea of you know and I get a lot from it I get more than any drugs that the doctor could give me about my depression can do about it you know what I mean that this does more than any of them it gives, you, it gives you what nobody else can, you know, I mean, I've had depression most of my life and, you know, I've, I've taken drugs for it and stuff like that and seen CPNs and whatever you like, you know, and the best thing that's ever happened, to be honest, was coming here and doing the music because we're allowed to be who we want to be, we're allowed to say what we want to say, you know, there's no kind of barriers, you know, it's a nice safety net for a lot of people, you know. And I just love it because, you know, it's done so much for me. It's done more than any doctor's been able to do for years. Yeah, we made the CD with the in-house band that, we, that I was invited to join when I moved, when I came here. And um, we're called Resistance. And we recently brought our first CD out, which is a little EP really of seven songs that we've written and I play on two of them and one of them is a song that I wrote myself, you know, which is kind of autobiographical. Biographical. It's, a, it's called A Dying Man and it's about me. And the first line of it is like, a, a dying man lies homeless in the street. You know, basically sums it up. <laughs> you know? What do you mean you're a dying man? Well, I've got COPD. It's, and I've, got chronic fatigue and, um, from fibromyalgia and quite a few health problems like, you know what I mean, that all add up, but the COPD you know, is terminal. Yeah, I want to carry on with it as long as I can, you know, I want to, I've already, well we've already agreed that we're going to keep, they're going to keep me on as long as they can, you know, and in whatever way I'll either become a volunteer or you know they'll find more groups for me to do or whatever like you know what I mean. Musication is um, a part of um, Tango Smart it's a little group set out separate to help people deal with the problems through music and help do people deal with issues mental health issues and physical health issues and stuff like that through the power of music, like, you know what I mean? And it's quite amazing. I never thought I could write a song in my life, you know what I mean? But I've, at home I've got a folder. <laughs> well, it's the place I stay, I've got a folder. And it's full of songs. You know, I'm working on my second single at the minute. You know, I've had one single released already, 
which was a dying man. It was released onto YouTube and I got 10,500 hits in three weeks. Oh yeah, let me see these are for sale as well. I've only got eight copies left, so if you want to get one, you'll have to get in quick. You know, or we'll get to the Barbican on, on the 11th. <laughs> In terms of the people we work with who have learning disabilities, um, I think what we're doing is we're pushing that ceiling, the art artificial ceiling um, that people aren't aware of sometimes where they believe they can't achieve anything and the people around them also believe they can't achieve anything and people end up in rather exclusive communities of others just like themselves and therefore aren't exposed to kind of maybe the right models to show them what they could be doing. Well I think what we've done with that is something rather unique. So we've used pretty much the, the, the main form of music has been rap and we've set up a group called Hip Hop Shake Up Rappers done several videos and for the young people involved in this this has um, changed their identity so that rather than seeing themselves as a, a young person who um, can't do much or a young person who's very dependent on parents they can start seeing themselves differently like as a, as a rapper and in some cases um, as an ambassador and a champion for other people with, with disabilities so the people we have come in here are quite vocal and aware of the fact that they do have disabilities, learning disabilities, and see themselves as representing for others around the country. So when we have our videos and we um, get feedback from that and find that that's been an inspiring thing for someone maybe down in Brighton, um, that's really good because that's not just the people up here we have an impact with, but uh, people around the country. I think that's what they are, they're champions of uh, what can be achieved. I've been a gifted and talented coordinator and my MPhil was in that area, so I'm very um, used to looking at people, looking at talents, being aware that everyone has a combination of talents and difficulties and having an approach where I spot the talent and would kind of encourage the person to use that to um, kind of help get over the difficulties that they might have. And that works for people that have been kind of categorised, for want of a better word, as having a learning disability, as much as it does for somebody who's incredibly able, but has perhaps struggled with addiction. You know, everyone has talents. Um, so it's a kind of a talent spotting approach. I'm conscious that I do that with every individual. It's like I look at them and I, and I think, what's their potential? Where can I see them? How can they fit in? Um, where could they grow? And because I have a vision for them, um, it, it's good because I think that's infectious and they can kind of join in that. And I sometimes think that's the first thing that a person needs, um, you know, being able to see where they could go. So with the, with the guys with learning disabilities and girls, we're starting to get some girls now as well. It's like having that belief of, yeah, you can get up on that stage and you can rap alongside anyone else. And you know what? You're not just a good rapper for someone who's disabled. You're a good rapper. And you have a voice that's interesting, um, a voice that perhaps hasn't been heard before because it's representing something that hasn't been put into words, certainly not in such a kind of in-your-face way. One of the challenges um, is that the, the people we work with who have um, multiple difficulties like homelessness, addiction, offending patterns, etc. Um, I think the challenges are that they are so embedded um, often in kind of negative pathways that even when some success is, is clear to see, there's always a chance that the, the person um, can kind of relapse. So one of the challenges is to keep maintaining that positivity for them, not for me, I'm relentlessly positive, um, but it's a kind of that encouragement so that the person kind of can believe and can forgive themselves, I suppose, when things go wrong and can, can believe that it's still good, and they're still on an upward um, trajectory. Our vision is, um, it's all to do with regeneration and employability. 
and the plan is that we will continue with the model that was started which is um, encouraging adults with multiple problems to um, do more with their lives so the idea is they start off coming to our courses and clubs and then progress by um, then starting voluntary work with us as well developing their employability that way adding to our human capital and then using that human capital to add um, value to the work we do with the guys of learning disabilities because that allows us to then have special one-to-one -one support for everybody um, it develops their participant voice um, the idea is this model is going to grow there will be free clubs for the community so come April when we move into our new um, our new site with our new rooms the my plan is that we'll be running about in between 8 and 12 different free things a week for this community which need things to do electronics art drama filmmaking as well as the music um, maybe a bit of creative writing as well but the these will be run by the people from the community who have trained up as volunteers with us lots of free stuff lots and lots of goodwill lots of music being generated and the business will grow and the business will thrive because of that and it is a business we're a, a community interest company um, we we need kind of contracts we need customers as well as the funding streams we can pull down because we're doing good stuff and we have social aims I think if we were just um, kind of reliant on our social aims without trying to think about viability we wouldn't be in the position we are now which is a about to grow really hopefully quite hugely. So the Barbican um, was uh, something of a pinnacle to go to such a superb venue with the professional lighting and music and have uh, our young people and our adults, many of whom have uh, difficulties and struggle with self-esteem and confidence, to have them get on that stage and to um, have the experience of a lifetime of a good sized audience um, it's such a confidence boost and as a result of that they will grow and it's a memory they'll have forever but I think it's more important than that I think that could be something that um, is the launch pad for even better things for people so it was a lovely lovely night everybody really enjoyed it and uh, it had real impact as well I think on the people that performed and from the feedback I've been getting I think on the audience too. Um, one example is um, people in the audience who have struggled with addiction themselves and have um, issues when it comes to um, feeling inhibited about things and feeling self-conscious um, to see so many young people with learning disabilities on the stage totally uninhibited really joyful I think that was something that they'd never seen quite exceptional so um, I think it was more than just the performers that benefited from that and had some impact I think people's stereotypes were challenged as a result of that night not just an enjoyable night but something that was was quite profoundly moving so to um, anyone out there um, who's interested in hearing more about uh, Tanghall Smart I'd, I invite you to uh, to contact me and, I mean, and I'd love to talk to you about that, about how, how you may, may be able to help us. Um, I, I think we are really worth helping. We have this vision of inclusion which involves um, the whole of our community and, and, and wider, not one small group. Um, it's all the groups and people that aren't in any groups at all and, and I think society needs that with things having broken down with the, um, the emphasis on technology and social media and less people doing the face-to-face -face contact stuff. I think an organisation like us that offers people something to belong to and to feel welcome within and somewhere where they can grow within and feel valued. I think there's a, a, a real place for that. Um, I would welcome anyone out there who feels they've either got something they want to donate to us or has got some, some work they feel that we could deliver um, or um, has, has money. Um, because that all of those things would be helpful. Also, if you're a, a person that just wants to kind of come along and look and see what we're doing and uh, just kind of give us the thumbs up, you know, that's good, that's good as well. So anything that um, you feel that I'd be interested in hearing, I'd want to, to listen to, really. So, yeah, thank you.